Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War Guild Wars week 54, day 4. It is a brown day. Before we do though, we need to go finish this pet. Because <laughs> I just looked at it and it had like 6 minutes left, so uh, we gotta do like one battle per minute. Let's go do this real quick. But then we're heading to Brown Gilroy Day, and then we're trying to find a Volky because we still have gotten zero total Volkies so far, which is uh, not good. Definitely not good. And of course, you would revive. Great when we actually need to do it quickly. I don't want to check how much time is left. It's probably like five minutes. <laughs> Should be able to. We have done it in under five minutes before. Uh, back before this team got nerfed. I think we can still do it after the fact. Also, we're using Frost Mage right now, which, uh, if nothing else, at least these, all these pets we constantly keep getting are giving us quite a bit of uh, uh, EXP towards our Frost Mage. I believe we're almost level 50 on it, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, need to try getting it to level 70. Are we going to get it within the next two days? Probably not, but at least we'll get more EXP towards it. Less that we'll have to do in the future. All right, we'll take the red. Go get nice and furnace down. Hello, everyone. Hello, Medieval. Hello, Elite Master. Hello, Danny. Hello, Marcelo. Hello, uh, Mr. Jesse. Hello, uh, Ruva. Welcome, everyone. Uh, let's try killing out the summon first because it seems to be the most annoying and we can't double kill it with Ubista anymore. Uh, let's move that down. Get a nice double kill there and furnace it. Go from there. You're up to seven keys. I still can't find one. Just one of those weeks that we just don't get any, it feels like. It's just one of those weeks. It's not too big a deal. We have plenty of other resources, but these are just to make sure that we get even more. Plus, this is the last vault event for a while. For, like, another whatever it's going to be. Though they are adding something kind of like vault events in the future that aren't exactly vault events. I still don't re exactly know what's up with that. But we'll find out eventually. Really? Why was everything summoned? Luckily, it's in Ubistet range. If anything, that even made it easier in Ubistet range because how much attack ends up gaining. But, oh, well. That's fine. That is fine. Okay, I gotta focus now. We're up against the like three minute clock. I would I would check the amount of time, but I know for sure if I, the second I do, it's gonna waste time. Yeah, we'll get that hit down. Why not do it on you? <laughs> Just because he has his ability up. Though we actually did get to dispatch it, so that works. Do that, get in furnace. Hopefully get full man on another Ubisoft. I don't think that's gonna reach though. Uh, well, we'll go take, not that, move that first, move that, go get a good divine on you, because you're probably going to revive, with our luck right now, uh, take a bunch of reds whenever we can, do that, get a nice and furnace, because we don't really have another option, not going to be enough for Ubisoft, oh, that does bring it to kill, nice, two more battles, go, 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 should be able to make it, we'll have like two minutes to spare or something, Okay, we'll take the yellow down. We'll take uh, that mess right there. That'll give us protector. We'll throw it on the summoner or his chance of reviving troop. Take that. Take the other purple if we can. Take a brown. That'll give us full, what's his name? Ubistet. Hopefully. Get full mana already. Uh, get that on that. Just in case it revives. Because it will. That should be the last of our browns. Yes, it is. I don't want to waste Ubistet for that, but we will. And now we just need to infernus that area. If it'll even give it to me. That'll be enough to kill the first one, not the second, though. Uh, okay, I just have to take that. Oh, you know what? I should have taken a blue or something. Oh, no, good. It didn't go for it. I was going to say, because it's probably just going to kill it. But it didn't. Let's take out the weaker one, especially since it might revive. It better not. 25% uh, chance, and they got it, of course. Right when I need you not to. Do it right over. That's not a red. Get the Infernus on it. Don't you die on Deathmark. What are you doing? Luckily, that makes almost no difference on anything. And one more battle. Can we finish it in X amount of time? I have no clue how much left is, is there. I'm like rushing and we're probably going to have like five minutes left over. It was at about the 15 minute mark when I started setting up the stream. So we'll see what it is after the fact. <laughs> well, if we get this battle done, that means we made it. Even if we don't claim it, because it automatically claims it in your mail. That's going to be fine. That will be fine regardless. Okay, get the good Uber set there. A couple of blues, two out. Get another hit. Get, uh, oh, that better not kill us at death mark. And Infernus and dead. There we go. What does that bring us to? Yes, we got it. Okay. How much time do we have left over, though? Fame rewards. Only one. All that for only one copy. 
Uh, we had... Uh, oh, we had three minutes left. We have plenty of time. Anyways, welcome to Guild Wars uh, week 53, day four. So let's go do Brown Day. Uh, we've won every day so far, though it looks like we aren't going to today, but that's mainly because a lot of people haven't done their battles yet, including myself. So, uh, yeah, let's go do that. We're still Paragon. We're still probably the high, so if we can keep 5-0 all this week, it might be the first time ever we double Paragon. Harry, you haven't upgraded your stuff. He's not here, though. Um, I wish there was private messaging in-game so we could go tell him. But there is not. Not even through your guild. Oh, why are you using Divines? Don't make me have to... Do we have to go bring out the new Mythic? On this day, it actually would work a little bit better. Oh, uh, why? Don't make me do this. Do I need to revamp my entire team just to go silence you? If he's using Divine Hero class, I will. He's not. He's using Assassin. Why on earth are you using Assassin? I guess because he's leveling Assassin. What do we do about that? I can triple silence him. I cannot quad silence him, though. I'm just trying to think of what our team would be if I try putting her in it. Because then we can't really run Corvash. And I want Corvash so we can stun his 10% Assassin. Uh, speaking about 10% Assassin, let me move that Ubestet if we are going to keep the Ubestet. Because we do not need that dying. That's our main way of killing. Uh, I think we just go as is. Um, I don't know. There would just be too many things we'd have to put into the team. If we were to go the other way around. But if we were, we'd probably have to put in Bloodhammer and what's her name? It'd probably be Gorgotha, what's her name, Bloodhammer, and something else to keep the team stable. That would hopefully be a mana generator. But I think we're actually just going to have to stick with this. Because I really need that stun for um, first slot. If he was using Priest, I'd consider it. Maybe we'll find another one. If one of them's using Divine today, there might be multiple people in this guild that are all using Divine. So we'll give it a shot and see what happens. There, so we got to go Gorgotha down. He's getting way too close to full mana. Luckily, we have four Vash Raid to go on it. I do not have a drop there, but we can go move this. So I guess we will. Three manas. And now we throw core Vash. Double check the board. Looks fine. Oh, 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 that doesn't look fine. Uh, I don't have a drop for that. I wish I did. I'm almost tempted just to take that skull because there's no way he's going to go all the way. Um, but then again, he's just going to take a skull anyway. So we'll do that. That is probably Ubestet range. So much so, I'm not even going to test it. It looks like it is. And there we go. And now we just need to do that double combo again. And keep repeating it. That's the whole premise of this team. Is get Corvash, get Ubestet win. And that is basically all you have to do, essentially. Uh, we'll get rid of Red. We don't actually need Red. And he does, so that'll work. Uh, I do not have enough damage to kill him. So we need a Cor Why Corvash? What are you doing? Be a one mana short. Hopefully he gets off this storm on the Reds there. Nope. Just gives him some Red that he doesn't even need at the moment. So he does get a lot of mana accumulation out of it, and a lot of turnage, and a lot of damage. Don't kill that. What are you doing? It's getting close. We'll take that over. Now is when we calculate out if that's enough damage. And if it's not, we can actually go get another skull. Actually, so much so. Let's just do that now. We'll do that. Take a free skull, and that's definitely enough damage. And there we go. Just double-double. Let's let me turn on the other light. Why do I not have it on? There we go. Oh, I remember why. Because this brown shirt likes to be all green screeny. All weird with green screen. <laughs> Look at that go. It's like, I, I like how right in the middle, it's fine. But because there's light sources from both sides that are like somewhat yellow tinted, it makes the thing look all, uh, <laughs> all invisible on the sides. <laughs> but if I turn on like e off either of the two lights, it's like, okay, it's fine. But then it looks too dark. I don't know, which way it looks better. <laughs> Anyways. Let's go and, uh, uh, let's see, I was going to go through chat real quick. What did I miss? Hello, Motown. Hello, um, uh, boo-boo. Uh, hello, boo-boo. <laughs> That's funny. Hello, uh, Strontium. And hello, uh, Herm Person. Okay, well, let's get into the next battle. So we're going to keep going with this. Uh, let me move it back to normal, though, with Ubista all the way in the back. Only reason we moved it earlier was because I didn't want it to die off Assassin randomly, which it did pretty good at not doing. Uh, this team is Doomskull spam. Interesting. Don't see that too often in Guild Wars, at least not anymore. It was somewhat popular when um, Doomstorm was ridiculously overpowered, but then they nerfed it twice. So barely anyone runs it for defend anymore. That's nice to see. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Carbos. Hello, Anthony. Welcome all. If you guys still have any other questions or anything you want me to go over, let me know. Mainly just clearing out Guild Wars at the moment, then 
probably farming gnomes the rest of the time. We actually already did delves earlier because I had to uh, finish it with Titan so that we could switch to Frost Mage. So all of today we could gain Frost Mage mana as well as all of tomorrow. And then tomorrow afternoon when we, after we finish everything, we'll switch back to, um, what's it called? We'll switch back to uh, Titan, Titan so that we can go do uh, delves again without missing a single delve day while still gaining EXP for these two days. I don't know, maybe I'll even just uh, delve delay them just so we can do it all day on Sunday too. Depends how much time I'll have on Sunday. But let's go and uh, take Regolta. Go for that. Nice explosion. He just skull pokes us. Perfectly fine. Grab a bunch of browns. Get a Corvash on there. That should be double Oopestet. And we'll be good to go from there and just repeat that cycle again. So do that. Do that. He'll take Skull uselessly because that does 75% reduction, so it barely does anything. He's actually stunned right now, so we get to hit through all of his uh, Skull mitigation that he would normally have. Uh, we'll Corvash and I guess calculate out if that's enough damage. And if I calculate out, I mean we'll take a Skull and then that's definitely enough damage. <laughs> Here we go. Don't even need to check. It's actually on track for 9,500 if we can keep this up. It's going pretty good. It's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Sometimes it can't get the Corvash off and doesn't get it in time. But uh, right now it's def Oh, that's not what I want to see. Deathmark, really? What are you using? Death Knight? No, you're just using Assassin. Why is everyone using Assassin all of a sudden? This entire guild using Assassin as their hero class. It's actually really bad because it could just randomly kill us. Not only off that Deathmark, but also off of... Um, uh, what's it called? Off of its 10% uh, skull thing. Oh, and I forgot to move Ubistet. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, well, luckily, once we get it stunned, it doesn't matter. And it just got stunned. Okay, it doesn't matter now. Let's go. Uh, as long as it stays stunned, that is. Heal Thor Crimson Mat. That's perfectly fine. There's a lot of damage, though, still. We'll get a blue over. I don't think I need a second core bash, but the problem is we don't have enough mana for anything. Can't even take a green or brown right now, nor yellow. All three of the colors that we need at this current moment in time. I kind of want to throw another Corvash, but it's going to do almost nothing. Oh, I just realized the combo he's going for. That is a little dangerous, especially with her right there, since she reduces her own HP constantly. I'm going to give him a Skull Distract here, because I can't use anything currently on the board. We can take a green now, throw down a bunch of yellows. That will give full mana to everything. He doesn't give us alignment, I don't think. What options do we have? I guess Skull... No, Skull isn't worth it. I guess we do it on brown. Brown or green? Probably green. So we'll do it on green just so we keep browns on the board for Gorgolfa and everything. We got a chance to cascade it too. Didn't get it. Now we Ubistet. I'll double kill. Now we have four Vash for those two. Neither of them have immune. It's the only elf I believe in the game that doesn't have immune to uh, Mana Drain. Because they last minute switched it to elf without actually giving it Mana Drain immunity. And I think that's match. This is the first time I'm actually going to bother bringing out a, up a calculator for this. Because it does look like it might not be enough. But let's go add it up. 40 plus 45. I wish they did this automatically. Plus 60. No, oh, I added 62. I'll just add one less for the other one. Plus 39. Plus 43. Plus 41. Boom. That comes out to a 270. And you divide that by 6. And then we add... Um, oh, that's not what you add. You add 41. And is that enough damage? Why does that look like it's not enough? That is 86 damage. That is not enough by 2 damage, is what that says. That's not good. Okay, now it's enough. There we go. <laughs> Problem solved! <laughs> Random skull for the win. Otherwise, that would have been 2 damage short. Okay, so far so good. This is a bit of a weird dragon team. Is he using Dragon Guard or Titan or what? He's using Titan, of course. We'll move that, move that. Oh yeah, I forgot we don't use purples. Oh, I should have taken the other five times then. I took the five times for the one I don't even need. Okay, we'll take some yellows. Brown to yellow would be nice, but we don't have it. So let's take a brown. Take a yellow manually. And now we can get all the mana we need. It doesn't have anything that's going to be pressing us immediately. Though the only big issue here is I won't be able to do anything about Dawnbringer. Or at least the first cast of Dawnbringer. Uh, because we won't be able to reach it. So we'll go for this again, ideally get that to full mana, and no it does not. Oh, he has that annoying explosion thing. That could be a bit bad, but uh, Brown Surge would be the best right about now, so we will go for that. Get everything to full mana, throw a Corvash down so we can't really do as much there. That I believe is kill range, so much so I actually am just going to go for the Ubistet. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, he removed the area that I kind of needed there, so I guess we'll go do this on a purple. 
Get that to almost full. Double check what else we have. I guess we can just Gorgolfa it, and that'll be fine. We have Red Storm going. So we'll do that. Uh, Upis death should be f not fine. Not even close. <laughs> we need way more mana. Uh, we'll move that. He'll be full mana next turn. We then Corvash so we can't do anything. And then we can just Upis death it. Not yet. Never mind. Uh, Gorgolfa into Upis death probably. And then if not, Divine into a Skull into Upis death. Which is also not available. I don't think it is. All I need is an extra turn on anything, and it should probably set it up. But it doesn't appear to be available. I could always just go for another core Vash and just do Oops Step for damage right now. Uh, we know for sure it's not going to kill. But it should be enough that it sets up core Vash kill. And the main reason I want to do that is to pass my turn. So that we can get a skull. So yeah, that's obviously not enough damage that we already knew. Uh, all we have to do now is just get core Vash though. Which if we had a blue available, we could do immediately. But we did not. So I guess we'll go and uh, just take away some mana somewhere. Uh, take the red down. Something get full mana. There you go. And take it out. Hello, Blade Song. Welcome. What would be a good replacement for Ubistet? At that point, you'd have to go into Gorgolfa, Corvash, something, something. Uh, what those two are depends on what you have. Uh, you can also replace out Gorgolfa with Cockatrice if you do not have that. But um, yeah, uh, the Cockatrice, Corvash, or the Gorgolfa, Corvash is the entirety of the team. Whatever you use for the rest is basically one mana generator and one damage source. And it just depends on what you have available as far as heavier damage sources. Uh, Sylvania Moore is pretty popular in a team like this just to fully mitigate out skulls. You have 75% duck reduction plus the uh, entangle. And then you can just put one other thing on it. Uh, what do we need here? Do we need to change up anything? What are you using as a hero class? Another Titan. That's kind of to be expected. That's fine. A little bit weird that he's using a Scorpius like... Oh! Ooh. Um, I don't have immune to poison on either of these two. He could potentially or Yali Scorpius us. Oh, well, we'll still play it out. The only big concern here is he's probably going to get mana for that. And I can't really stop him because our Corvatch isn't going to reach him in time. At least with the team composition we're currently using. But we'll take a brown to brown. It did not surge. That will hold us back a little bit. We'll take another brown. Grab herself a, uh, I guess that's another another brown. At this point, hopefully he goes for the Skull Distract, otherwise that's bad, that's bad. Okay, so he does that. We'll take our yellow. Need to go get a little bit more mana. We still have Brownstorm. Actually, he created the Brownstorm for us, so thank you very much. That's a little bit of an odd pick now. I didn't even realize that. Why would you have Brownstorm on Brown Guild War Day when the people that you're fighting need Brownstorm? Uh, let's see... Let's get a Corvash, because I don't want him to actually create more browns. There's already enough off the storm. Ubistet does not seem to be in range, so let's go get a bunch of explosion. Ideally, that would hit into his skull. It did not. I guess we calculate out if it's enough damage, because I believe the answer is no. We already have full mana for everything, so I don't need to keep looping mana. So, calculator, come back. We need you. Let's see. 60 plus 39 plus 47 plus 52... Uh, 55, a 40, a 43, and a 41. That comes out to that, divided by 6, and... Yeah, that's fine. And add... <laughs> I thought that number was weird for a second, and never mind, that's way more than enough damage. I don't even need to go do the rest. Oh, I forgot to take the brown though first. I, knew, I saw that earlier, but then didn't after I did the calculation. Fail. Uh, it's fine though. It didn't make really any difference, for the most part. I'm gonna let him have that skull. We just get our mana away before he can do anything. We got a double core vash on both of them, so it's basically no threat. And we score Golfa into Diviner into full mana to kill it with uh, whatever we get off of Oops that. So, we do not have anything that we could go do. So, move that first. And that still gives us nothing to do. Red is somehow not an extra turn with all of that that it has there. I guess we could just take a red, try for the skull, don't get it. Try this onto a brown there. Maybe go get like a yellow surge if we can. Nice. Get a good Grolfa in there. And there we go. We just Uba step that. And that'll be fine. And it dies. Is Famine viable? Yeah, fam Famine would be viable there. Really, any yellow damage source, <laughs> damage source would be viable there. 
Oh, that was a little bit lower than I thought, though. 9,270. Something happened that made it a lot lower. Right, let me turn that light back on. Looks kind of weird without it. Let's see. Uh, fix it by doing this. <laughs> Wait. Uh, will that fix it? Well, it would if I put it on. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to put it over me. This is the other reason why I normally didn't notice it. Like, for whatever reason, it only happens on the sides. But then if you do this, it would probably fix itself. Or it normally does. That looks good enough. There we go. Anyways. <laughs> Let's go and uh, hunt some gnomes. We already did pretty much everything else other than let me go do dungeons real quick. This doesn't take any time at all. Let's go do our standard one trophy thing. Good evening, Zidicus. Welcome. Okay, let's grab all those browns. Get ourselves a uh, hit down. Get a good explosion. Oh yeah, we ended up upgrading uh, pole arm finally. It has a weird delay on it now, though. I keep forgetting that. Whenever you give it perks to a weapon, you add about a... Um, uh, well, it depends on how many effects it has, but it adds like a one to uh, five second delay. Which can sometimes be more annoying than the benefit that you even gave to it. But it does have an interesting mechanic in that if the AoE kills something, the uh, silence goes to the next one in line. So you never actually put it on... You never put the silence on something that dies. Unless you kill it with five damage, but... That, it, it's still... If you do it with the AoE itself, it's fine. You always get the silence. About 300 hits in one hit, and you had... Was Ubestet? Oh yeah, you can get some really long Ubestet battles sometimes, but you just need to, like, get them... You just need to make sure you get them into range as quickly as possible. Because on HP spam teams, you do eventually get to the point where they get so much durability where you can't viably kill them with a Ubestet. And then the battle goes on. Because Ubestet's really bad at killing things that have a lot of durability. You need to have something else on your team that lowers them decently. Alright, we'll go for that. If it dies out, it's fine. Uh, what do we even need to move from here? I guess we'll take a red, start getting that back up. Something needs to reach full mana. There we go, that'll work. Get a sunbird down. Dead. And there we go. Okay, so, Gnome Hunt continues. <laughs> we reached level 50 on Frost Mage. That's looking nice. Still need to go get another 20 levels. It's probably not happening today. Uh, oh, we actually did some of these. Win battles using three monster troops and an army. How do we do that so many times? And green and four troops from the same type. Interesting. Four greens monsters on a single team would get all of those done simultaneously. I guess we'll probably do that. We only need to do that 12 times. And that should be fine. Monsters that should have a lot of greens in them. How do we already have so many battles with monster, though? We have nine of them somehow. What did we do that used it nine times? Select your hero avatar to bring up the hero menu and equip a new armor. Armor grant. I don't want to do that. Let's get a new one. Something better. Upgrade a troop to level 16. That is also awful. But uh, that's actually better reward than uh, one glory key. <laughs> so I'll take it. Or I think it is. 1,000 souls I'd probably value more than 20 glory. Um, okay, so easiest way to go do this, I guess, would be to check our treasure, probably. So let's go into the vault. Because I believe I still haven't upgraded some of the treasure. Because I keep it around for this purpose. Uh, let's see, 16. Yep, there we go. So we need to go upgrade this one to 16. Upgrade level exactly to 16. And that will give us 1,000 souls. Obviously, we spent more than 1,000 souls to get it there, but I want to do that eventually, so it didn't really cost us anything, in theory. Uh, but there we go. Okay, that's that. Go backspace. Go and uh, head to try to find gnomes, finally. So we were doing Mr. the Scales earlier because we need the trait stone. I guess we'll keep doing it for the rest of the day and then just figure out what the other next kingdom will go to. But um, for now, let's go back and try getting it down. We're still at zero vault keys. Um, I don't know when we're finally going to get a vault key, but I hope it's soon. It's only a matter of time. Is my Delve team monsters? Oh, yeah, that would explain it. Yes, it is, isn't it? It is triple monster because that is what's from. Yep, you're right. <laughs> That's exactly what caused us to have exactly nine. Because we had to do all three delves and we won every single delve. So we would have had nine battles. That's exactly what happens. Because we're using Cockatrice, which is monster. Um, Megavore, which is monster. And Weaver, which is monster. Yes, you are correct. That's where the nine came from. That is exactly where it came from.
The only thing that wasn't a monster was our hero, which is uh, Titan at the time. Yeah, we're about, I want to say, five to six hours dry now on keys. Everything from the previous stream, the little bit I did in the morning, and the little bit I did in between the two streams. And of course now. But it happens sometimes. If nothing else, at least we're still getting plenty of gnomes. It's not that we're not getting gnomes, it's just, not we're, it's just that we're not getting vault keys specifically from those gnomes. I should probably be doing some PvP right now, mainly because my pet doesn't- I mean, my guild currently doesn't have a pet active. Normally you do almost perpetually during these events, but I don't believe we currently do right now. So I should probably fix that. I gotta double check. Uh, games. Nope, we do not currently have one active, so let's go try finding one. Let's just go to casual PvP and repick accordingly. We have three teams set up. One for low rarity, one for, um... Uh, one for gold farming, for the fire bombs, and one for basically actual teams for souls. So let's get a pull arm in there. That'll almost kill. I want to try skull spamming him here if we can, but it doesn't look like we have it anywhere. So let's go get a sunbird down, and then just kill it with fire bomb. Please explain. Uh, can PvP in this game online? No, there is no online PvP currently in this game. It's something they may consider adding in the future, but at this current moment in time, it is not on their plans to do so. Um, but yeah, they're probably not going to be adding it. But it's still something they would consider. Oh wow, that actually finally hit for once. That's the first time I've seen Polearm actually get an extra turn. Almost always it just misses and gives the enemy a bunch of stuff. Alright, we got a fire bomb down. That's supposed to get you to full mana. Luckily, it did ult cascade and just dies off the sunbird. None of those are what we need. That should be easy enough. Hello, the last knight. Welcome. You're wondering, how are you doing with the uh, hurricane still? Uh, I only got hit by the previous hurricane, Hurricane uh, Florence. The most recent one. The only thing that did was make my electricity go off for like three hours and that's it. And some heavy rain on one of the days when it was like going by us. But uh, it didn't do anything damage wise. Yeah, I'm still at my house right now. And the only damage we still have from it is a little bit of very minor roof damage and of course the AC system below the house, AC heating system. Uh, the duct's work is completely destroyed. But that can be replaced in time. I just have a, a little small uh, AC unit for now for temporary fix. But there's no way I can afford to refix that because we're probably just going to put it into the roof next time. Uh, the only problem is that would cost way more to do. I think it's like 6000 to actually implement something like that. But it's not something we actually need at the moment, so we're not bothering with it. Okay, go click refresh. Firebomb. Ah, oh, that's not a real firebomb team. What are you doing? Hit when it has one extra troop in there. There we go. That's a real firebomb team. Now I can put that to Warlord 4, go for gold. Oh, it wasn't working earlier, and then I kind of just kept it down. I can go put it back up. Let's see, will it work if I try putting it back up right now? It was just not working on one of the streams for whatever reason. Let's see, is it working now? Uh, no, it's still not working now. I don't know what's up with it. The graphic works, but that's just because it's a graphic. <laughs> the chat itself is wanting to not work, though. Let me see, what happens if I click on it? That's weird. Because when I bring it up on a screen, it shows it's working. But then when I try making it visible, it says it doesn't work. Oh, now it is. Okay, apparently just clicking on it makes it want to work. There we go. There's chat. <laughs> Little mini chat. <clears throat> mini chat. Trying to catch up right now. It's going through all the chat that's been said this stream. Should be caught up in like a minute. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let's go and uh, throw that down. Get our gold. Okay, I think it's caught up now. Hello, Captain. Welcome. Get all that down. Take a skull. Let it do whatever Firebomb looks like. 
And well, obviously firebomb. The whole entire team is firebomb. What is it going to do? Other than skull. And another... Can he stop taking skull? So let us win the battle. There you go. And we get the easy battle. Move that over. Try that. There we go. Let's take the green down. Get a good firebomb in there. Hopefully get a sunbird as follow-up, which we can. Let's do that. Take a little bit of mana. Let's go wipe out the entire enemy team. And never mind. Hero gets to survive. And that's still not enough damage. That's still not enough mana. Uh, what now? I guess move that over. That is still... Can something reach full mana already? Other than you. I guess we probably had skull alignment somewhere that we could have used. Wasn't paying attention to it, though. I normally don't bother paying attention to Forest Guardian on this team. When running for it for a quick team. Okay, can we get a battle? We need either the one trophy or a firebomb. There's two... Oh, two different things that we can get as a possible one. And I just repicked past it. Looks like a larger number. Hello, firebomb. Low levels. That wasn't the one I just skipped. There we go. There's firebomb. Hello, Vangor. Welcome. Glad you make it. Will the developers do something with Guild Wars? Yes, probably. They are, we're planning changes in the future to uh, Guild War related stuff. It used to be every single week as well in the past, but then there were complaints about it being every single week. So they made it a lot less frequent. But then after they changed it, everyone wanted it back because of what they added in place of it. <laughs> Okay, we'll go move that. Go grab a uh, blue down. Did he really just get a kill off that? Oh, all we have to do is wait till he fire bombs, and down it goes. What was the first card uh, you had against the firebomb team to generate gold to 300? Um, greed. He is the pretty much only good thing that came from the Cinema Mirage Kingdom. That's not fully true because there's like early game gluttony and wrath in some instances kind of gets used and stuff like that. But for the most part, he's like actually, oddly enough, the most viable troop from uh, Cinema Mirage. And basically what he does is he has Empowered, so he gets to cast immediately. And he gets a gigantic gold gain equal to his life that automatically extra turns. So it has no downtime other than like a second, not even. And uh, you get a gigantic amount of gold from it making it the most efficient way to farm gold in the entire game. Uh, and you just combine it with Cedric Sparkle Sacks because this have 100% gold bonus each. So you just get a gigantic gold boost together with all of that. And uh, the reason for Bronze Lock Pistol is whenever there's a gnome, we can kill it because this weapon gets a boost ratio based on gold. And we can basically do this and clear out the entire board with uh, our cast. Or when we have max gold, we can. So if we do this, it now clears out the entire board, every last gem, all 64 of them. And we just keep spamming that to kill out uh, a gnome whenever it appears. And for a normal battle, we just can reach max gold within seconds, pretty much. And we get a lot of gold. That battle gave us 9,439. Another firebomb. Thank you very much. This one will probably give us more towards, like, 4,000. But we're getting uh, 300 plus whatever boosts for the gold. So that's quite a bit. I believe with our bonuses, that's almost... Um, I think it's around 800 gold or something. Somewhere around there. Good take a blue, let it do whatever. Uh, oh, wait, 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 hold up. I just realized these um, firebombs are not real firebombs. Well, they are, but they're not traded. Why do people use untraded firebombs? It defeats the whole purpose of even using firebombs in the first place. Doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, yeah, I was just going to move that for now. It's fine. Of that. Start getting bronze lock back up. Hopefully it doesn't do anything weird. Oh no, never mind. He's just throwing firebombs down. Go for it. That's what you should have done from the first place. There you go. Let's see how much did that battle do? That battle did uh yeah, 3873. Because it was all the way at the one trophy with very weak stats. So it gave a lot less gold. Hey Demon or Angel, we found you, though we're not fighting you. Why did you have to put crown on your team? You're making it needlessly annoying to the point where it's not worth fighting. Actually, I don't think he's here right now. He's in the morning stream. He's not here now, though. I'll go get a firebomb. Go get sunbird at it. 
Take a purple to a nothing, apparently. Take a red. He gets it instead. And then it goes. Why don't you spend your turns to fill greed again and get the max? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, normally it's not worth it unless we can get it automatically. If we can get it without going out of our way, it's worth it. But if it takes multiple turns, it's definitely not worth it, ever. Like right now, it's probably going to be worth it because we can easily get the full just, but never mind, he died. Uh, but it would have been if he didn't die right there. Because we could have easily gotten the mana with the board we had. But sometimes you just can't get it with the board you have. At least not easily. Okay, that's going to be a lot of damage. Luckily, he didn't go for it. And that's fine. We stick skull and he does whatever. And down it goes. He can't do any damage once they all die. How do you get it so that you see every team without checking? Uh, you have to spend at least $30 on the game. I believe it is. 30 or 40 I think it's 30 And the easiest way to do that is to buy the Death Knight armor underneath the hero page thingy. Or the whatever it is. It's underneath here. But yeah, getting Death Knight armor is the easiest way to do that. But I believe you just have to spend $30 on the game. It's VIP 3. If you check the shop, it shows you all the things that it ends up giving. Uh, VIP 3 is generally one of the biggest stopping points. VIP 3 and VIP 5. VIP 3 because it's you, all you would normally do is just get Death Knight armor and it would bring you there. So that you'd have the best armor in the game, plus you'd have automatic scouting. And VIP 5, people tend to do for VIP access uh, chests, so that you can get um, Mythics just ever so slightly easier. It's actually not worth it anymore to ever open VIP keys in the current state of the game. But if VIP keys technically have the highest chance of giving you Mythics, this is costing an absurd amount of gems to buy. Um, but yeah, and that's at 130. This is at $30, and this is at 130. And those are the two biggest stopping points that people tend to go with spending money on the game. Though it keeps going higher and higher. The most rewards beyond this point are a uh, not efficient relative to the amount of bonus it gives. Like, I believe level 10 is $790. And last I recall, I don't remember what it was. I believe it's 8000 something dollars. Yes, $1,000 uh, for VIP 20. And yes, people do have that. <laughs> they wouldn't have added it if people don't. Um, and it's a really large number, too. I think it's over 100 people that actually have that. It's uh, larger than you might think. <laughs> Who have spent over $8,000 or however much it is. Anyways, let's go and move over to... Um, well, back to, I guess, the Gnome Farm. Still have zero Volt Keys to show for all of our uh, efforts. Oh, yeah, never mind. I was doing... Um, well, I guess we'll go back to Explore. Why not? Let's move it back to Normal. Or Hunt for a Pet Gnome isn't going well. Actually, we didn't even find a single Gnome while we were in PvP. I'll get a Firebomb down. Are you considering changing your red Guild War Defend team? Oh! I forgot to go change my other teams. I meant to go change my brown day for today. Which means I forgot to go change the other one because I can't change that now. Whoops. I meant to change my brown day and my... Um, I don't think red day was one of them I was going to go change. Wait, what am I using for red? You find too many people use it to beating dwarf team these days. Oh yeah, it's really easy to beat red dwarf team. Um, the only reason I still use it is I just really haven't found anything that will work. The issue with using a Queen Titania team is they're already using red, so if they use a Queen Titania themselves, they'll just be able to counter you out. And there's not too many consistent options to use. But no, I think dwarves are fine. Um, they're a lot less efficient than they used to be, because most people know how to work around it now. Also, anyone who is Dawnbringer has a pretty good chance of not dying against it. But uh, I don't know, I think it's, it still gets wins. I think we got one or two wins off of it. It's about average compared to all the other teams we've been using. And everything that you use for it, if you use a pure dwarf team, doesn't actually conflict with anything else, which is nice. We got 20 gem keys from a vault uh, last week. I was pretty impressed. Oh yeah, you can get a lot of really big loots from it. You can even get uh, 250 gems, as well as 15 event keys, as well as major orbs, and a lot of really uh, decent value stuff from Cedric Sparklesack, who's in every vault key. Don't move that down. Get a firebomb in there. Grab the sunbird into... Why does he have a mythic? I hate when they do that. Especially when they have a legend to go with it. It's not going to be enough damage now. I'm actually going to have to go for pole arm just for doing enough damage. You better not die to that death mark. Good. And then we wipe out the team. No revive. <laughs> major orbs. Growth every time. We actually did really good on, um, on uh, major orbs and vault keys the other day. Or the last time we had an event where we actually opened them. Okay, moment of truth. Will we get a vault key finally? The answer is probably no, but we can hope. 
We can definitely hope for it. Show me the Volky. That is not a Volky. That's almost the exact opposite of a Volky. Yeah, the loot table of Cedric varies very heavily. It varies everywhere from zero to the best drops in the entire game. And the best drops he has is 250 gems, which we have gotten before. Blue major orb, which we have gotten before. And purple major orb. Those are the biggest drops he has. And the 250 gems worth 250 gems. The purple orb is worth about two, or 675 gems. And the blue orb, there's no exact value of how much it could be worth, but it's generally about a thousand gems or so, I would say. If you were to actually put a value to it. Okay, I'll move that down. Get a firebomb going. Uh, grab herself a red to purple. Pretty little turn. That should be enough just to kill off Sunbird. And it is indeed. Also, we'll have a redeem cone a little bit. I obviously won't be giving it out when we get a wall key for today because, well, we're not going to get a wall key in 20 minutes. Unless we get really lucky. Sunbird at him. Purple over, grab the yellows. Get a sunbird at it again. Still no gnomes though. Or at least no good gnomes. Every single gnome we're getting this stream is just giving us near useless uh, uh, items. Need a new mythic, uh, dwarf mythic perhaps? I know, the current dwarf mythic is pretty underwhelming. It doesn't synergize well with dwarves, and it's pretty bad even in context of teams that use it good. Uh, how bad is the value of buying troops after an arena run? Oh, excessively bad. There's never a single instance where you would ever do it in the current state of the game. At one point, it was almost ever so slightly somewhat worth it, due to the fact that thousands upon thousands of gems were coming into the game per week. Um... But these days, no. It is never a single instance where buying the arena thing at the end is worth it. I wish they would revamp it because it's a gigantic gold sink that you can accidentally click on after any battle. It's particularly annoying as a newer player because most of those troops you don't have leveled. So it ends up charging you like three, four, five hundred gems instead of the normal uh, 20. The reason why it's charging it as I believe it starts them at level 10 or 15. That's actually pretty sad. I think it only gets them to level 10. <laughs> that was like way, 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 way back. That was implemented back when max level was only 15. Like it's really dated. Back when souls were almost like non-existent. And they've never bothered changing it. They changed it once. Uh, ever so slightly. Because at one point you were able to buy the rare. The uh, common and the ultra rare for only one gem. But then they increased it to 20 gems. But yeah, it's never worth it. There's not a single instance where buying these things after Arena would be worth it. Actually, maybe. If you only needed one copy of the Ultra Rare to get your thing to uh, max, and you could buy for 20 gems because you had them all leveled already, that might be the only instance where it would have been worth it. Like, for example, if we would have done it with War Cleric, because we only needed two War Cleric copies, and in that instance it would have been worth it. Because it would have given us a whole armor bonus just for doing that. Because we would use it to get um, White Helm Max. And that's about the only instance you would bother. And I believe they have to be either level 10 or 15 in order for you to get it uh, down to 20 gems. All three of them have to be at that level. Wow, another gnome. That was pretty quick compared to the previous one. Why do we keep getting normal ones, though? I want to see some soul gnomes. But then again, I guess this loot table overall is better, but it has a lot of worse drops than the souls. Do you have a vault key, though? Five gems. Well, that's better than souls, I guess. That's another drop we've been getting a lot today. Oh, well, <laughs> there's soul guy. At least we're getting a lot of gnomes all of a sudden. Can you drop a vault key already? You're supposed to have a higher rate. Where's your vault key? That is not your vault key. You wish uh, Tacit would do a comprehensive delve strategy? What's with all the gnomes all of a sudden? Uh, for people who didn't have Megavore? 
Um, I've done a couple other teams going over. I will be going over each specific faction very soon, going over teams for them. I've mainly just been waiting till more factions would come into the game, because doing it when there's so few kind of wouldn't be able to cover much. Uh, seriously, we just got like four gnomes in a row and not a single one dropped Volky. But yeah, we will be going over more Delph stuff soon. But I have gone over other alternatives. You basically just form an entire team around uh, I. We don't even really need Megavore for most of the teams. If you've been noticing how we've been playing them out, uh, Megavore is mainly just there to speed it up, more so than an actual required troop to win. I would say Arachnean Weaver is actually more useful than a Megavore in that context. But basically, the only thing you're doing in basically every delve when you're doing high level delve is build an entire team around I and do everything in your power to make sure I does not die while having as much mana to it as quickly as possible while using Titan or some similar uh, tr class to make sure you constantly have barrier. Uh, let's see. It's video showing faction troop only teams it would be great for delves. That would just be the normal team though, mainly. Well, I guess not. Um, for the all seeing eye, it's the normal team. Like basically what the final battle is in that delve is what you end up using as the actual team. For Hall of Guardians, you use the Silent One, or whatever it's called. Not the Silent One. I forget what it's called. Silent Sentinel. Um, you use Silent Sentinel into three Gargoyles. Or you can do two Gargoyles plus that guy that gains attack, that yellow-purple. Um, another useless drop. And for... Um, what was the other one called? For Crypt, you end up using four Lady Marana. And I have no clue what we'll use for the next one. We'll find out when it gets there. When will I make a Gems of War rap video? <laughs> Probably never. Oh no. I guess we could try it at some point. That would be kind of fun to do. But yeah, no time soon. <laughs> I can say that much. <laughs> I don't know the first thing about audio editing in that regard. There we go, go for Firebomb. <laughs> How many subscribers for a rap video? <laughs> if I was to do that, it would be something I would just randomly do at some point. It wouldn't be based on any milestone. Why did you have to die to death mark? Really? Fine, we'll play it out normally without a sunbird. There we go. Also, hello, William. Welcome. In Hall of Guardians, you use Titan with Dragon's Eye, Cockatrice, Maul, and Weaver. Uh, that way, you have the mana generation from Cockatrice for a free kill with Maul, and Weaver for mana generation when you have Eye on the bottom, too. Yep, that sounds perfectly fine. And you just use the Maul to get rid of something like Gargoyle every time, and you just auto win from there. Hello, Teutonic. Welcome. Do you mind sharing a purple build around Infernus? Only Mythic. Purple build as in pure purple? Well, my normal team already is. So I don't know if you have every component for it. It's um, Hellcat, uh, Elema Grim, Infernus, and Umberwolf. And you can build the exact same team and just replace Elema Grim with something else and use Infernus as your main damage instead of... Um, instead of... Uh, uh, what's his name? Instead of, um, Ub not Ubistet. Why can I not remember his name? Elema Grimm. Instead of Elema Grimm as your main damage source, you can just move it around some to make it so in furnaces if you don't have Elema Grimm. It functions weaker, but it still is the same premise.
an Ice Worm loop team? It's the same thing as a um, Rock Worm loop team, just with a different mana generator. You just use Valkyrie for it. Actually, you can even go use the new guy that came in this week and get two times straight stones if you really wanted to. The uh, one that ends up um, converting to blue. It's pretty much the exact same thing. It's just a different troop. And you can do that all this week for two times straight stones. Probably should have showed that on Monday. <laughs> yeah, it's as simple as just going three Ice Worms with a um, with Song Singer or whatever his name is. Storm Singer. Now we'll get Sunbird in there. And dead. Okay, I guess we'll go give out the code, because it doesn't seem like we're getting a Vault Key. At least not today. We'll try again tomorrow, and we'll try again on Sunday. Hopefully we'll get better luck. But currently we're at zero. Okay, let me go get out the code one moment. Let's go into our code section. Delve into our codes, buried beneath many, many layers of that. Where is this right one? I have like four different Gems of War things. I think it's this one. I was checking some stuff on the forum. And now it's not wanting to load. There it goes. So it'll go all the way. Oops, wrong one. Never mind, that's not the right one. That is the right one. That was the pillow from earlier. <laughs> that someone sent. Also, someone messaged me. Uh, okay, I'll go read that later. Based on the title, it sounds like it's several paragraphs. <laughs> I'll go copy that. Copy, copy, save. Uh, go get this over into the layout right here. Boom, boom. Sends. Nope, never mind. Why did that not work? Probably because I have a space. Why is it not letting me delete that space? Hello? Okay, one moment. Why is this not wanting to cooperate? Refresh the page. That's not even wanting to refresh the page for me. Uh, error failed to contact the origin. Um, that was weird. And then it worked. <laughs> I've never seen that error before. But it's working now. Okay. That was super strange. Again, failed to contact the origin when I'm trying to refresh it to do it again for the other account. I think it worked, but it keeps bringing that error up for me. I don't know why. There we go. Now it's working properly. Okay. <laughs> Paste that there. Let me know if you guys get that error. Copy, copy. Put that away. Put that into chat. Could just be because there's so much traffic there right now because we're about to give out a code. So people were already probably preemptively going there. There you guys go. Let's see, what did Vangor end up saying for the rap? My name is Tacit, and I'm fighting Guild Wars. I got gems of war knowledge coming out of my paws. I give out redeem codes so my fans can get junk. Now this is my gems of war rap, and I'm bringing the funk. <laughs> Good job, Vangor. That's funny. Oh, wow, we just had this pet. We just had this at the beginning of the stream, and now we got it again. Well, round two. We need uh, 11 more. And then we can go get the max bonus for dragons. Is there any way to increase your drop rate of getting a mythic? Nope. You just need to get more keys or start getting more diamonds. Uh, or just make sure you're doing dungeons every day so you get your daily uh, diamonds. Um, that's the only thing that's really going to help you with that. Uh, the diamonds will give you a uh, eventual guarantee mythic of choice. And having more keys just gives you more chances. There's no way to really increase your chances. Mana surge. Mana surge. Okay, we'll get the hit there. Go through an inferno. And then we just kill it out with anything.
Oh yeah, we're using a hero class now too. It feels so weird actually gaining the EXP from doing these. Pet battles are so ridiculously good value when you actually have um, a hero class to go feed EXP to. It's almost so good that even if uh, you don't need the pet anymore, it's almost worth it just to play it out for the um, EXP towards your hero class, if it still needs EXP. Take the red over. I did not get full mana. Not even close. Take another red. Still not full mana. And now we can't take any of the three manas we need for him. Let's go grab this down and hopefully kill it with whatever happens. Both around Furnace and Oobstet. I should probably should have done that the other way around. Yeah, no problem for the code. All right, we'll take all those reds, grab ourselves a brown to red. That'll give us the mana we need to hopefully actually hit something. We'll throw this at whatever can actually die off of it, which is almost nothing. I guess we'll do it on you. This is secure a guaranteed kill. And what else we need to move around? I guess we'll take a red right there. Go get a Oobstet into Infernus, and it'll die off of whatever it hits. Nothing will survive that unless they revive. You're finding it impossible to switch off a Titan. Yep, I have the exact same issue. The only reason we did it right now is because I did the Delves in the morning, which allowed us to then switch, which cost us 50 gems because I already shifted. So yeah, we actually still cost us gems because we had to change yesterday for the other class. So we weren't even able to avoid the 50 gem cost thing. It did cost us 50 gems to be using um, the hero, current hero class that we're using right now. But it was worth it because we're gaining a lot of HP between today and tomorrow. And we're still able to use Titan for both the days. We were able to use it this morning before we switched, and we were able to use it uh, tomorrow night when we switched back to Titan. Yeah, it is ridiculously hard to switch off the Titan, just because it's so required for Delves. There's a lot of things that you can get away with not using it for, but Delves is one of those few areas where you really need to be using Titan. The only other slight alternative that's kind of like Titan is Rune Priest, but the biggest issue with that is Rune Priest does not start with half mana. It also doesn't have Brown Storm, which is pretty vital if you're using a Dragon Eye team. Because that's how you get your initial barrier guarantee. Whereas it can be a little bit hard to get that initial Brown otherwise. Unless you specifically have a Brown Mana Generator on your team like Apothecary. If you were doing All Seeing Eye or something. Or a Cockatrice for um, the uh, Hall of Guardians. Hello Gustavo, welcome. Move that over. Take a skull. You finished the rap? <laughs> well, you're continuing Vangor's rap. Let's see. Uh, they say I have the knowledge. Yes, I do. Uh, I've been playing since college. Got so many hours in this thing. And my favorite card is Mummified King. <laughs> ah, pulling out the jokes. Good one. That's good. <laughs> I like that. Actually, we do have way too many hours in this game. I believe it's almost the most amount of hours I have in any game ever. Uh, it's a toss-up between Dota 1 slash 2. The highest three I have is uh, RuneScape slash Old School RuneScape. Well, mainly just Old School RuneScape. <laughs> when I say uh, normal RuneScape, I mean RuneScape back when it was actually back in like a decade ago. But uh, basically RuneScape in its entirety, Dota in its entirety, Duel of the Ancients, and... Um, Gems of War are my highest three played games ever. Uh, I don't know the time that I have in the other two, though. Uh, approximately in Dota 1 slash 2, I have a total of, I think, six to 10,000 hours because I was playing that since the day it came out because my cousins got me into it when I was like, I don't know, how old would I have been at that point? Nine? I don't remember. Um, RuneScape, just because, you know, that was, used to be pretty big. Still kind of is these days. One of the biggest MMOs out there. And, um, uh, yeah, and then just Gems of War, which we currently have approximately 6,000 total hours in, if you count every account I have. We have way too much time. <laughs> oh, yeah, what do we move? Also, all of the... Actually, I don't know if you can count that. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. I was going to say all of the, um, Moria-related games, but that's probably too broad of a thing. <laughs> We have quite a few hours into those kind of things when I was younger. But that would probably have only been like 3,000 hours total. Probably even less than that. Plus it wasn't on all one specific game. It was across a bunch of games. 
Like Dota slash Dota 2, I still count as one game because the meta was still pretty much the same, kind of. <laughs> like it's the same premise of game. It just visually got a really gigantic overhaul and then some mechanical changes, but it's still the same premise. Uh, what do we move here? We'll take that down into yellows. Grab, uh... That's good, just naturally going to reach full mana. I guess we throw in Furnace at it. Oh, or we can see that. There we go. Move that over. How did he not die to that? Because he has 25% reduction, that's why. <laughs> just answering my own question. And uh, we'll take a skull that dies. Right no! Why? Why must he be like that? Don't do that to us. We were just about to win. Now we got to go do, like, 30 seconds of damage just to kill it. We'll throw that at you. Get all the manas we need. Divinish Bala, go kill it with skulls. There you go. How did that not kill it? Here, have a Ubestet. That will definitely kill it. And there's no way you could possibly revive now. You have a good team with Anu? Anu Scepter or Champion of Anu? Um, oddly enough, Anu Scepter is actually better than Champion of Anu. You wouldn't use it. Uh, you would use it in more instances. Plus, it would probably be better in those instances. Both of them are relatively bad, though. The only time you really bring out Champion of Anu is um, basically Blue Guild War Day, and that's about it. And the only time you bring out Anu Scepter is if you really desperately need a single color to reach a lot of mana without having a specific converter for it. And there's very few instances you would ever need something that specifically does that. What did you start early or aim or wait? Did I start earlier, or are you dumb and you don't know? Oh, no, we started at normal time. And you're not dumb. But no, we started at normal time. Unless the time shifted. I don't think that's for another few weeks, though, right? I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, we started at normal time. We started at 8, as we always do. Every day. Get a good Ubestet in there. And we'll scroll into uh, a few more damage hits. He better not revive. Though, based on our track record so far today, he probably will. But yeah, does anyone else have any other questions? Otherwise, I'll probably start wrapping up for tonight. Okay, good. He did not revive. Can we get more than one copy this time? We got the same pet twice in a row. Come on, five copies. We actually did get five copies of something earlier, but there we go, two. That's double than one, so that's fine. We're up to nine copies now, or nine until he gets maxed. And yeah, we definitely need that. That makes dragon teams a little bit stronger. Might start bringing out dragon guard again. Oh, I forgot to go over the code thingy. But yeah, here's the code if any of you still haven't used it. Make sure to go do so. Should still be active. Use it on gemsofwar.com underneath the game code section. Your invite code can be found underneath your uh, settings menu right here. Whatever your, your game says there is what you put in. Your um, redeem code is over there in chat. You just simply go copy paste it and uh, use it at gemsofwar.com. Either click that link or go to gems of war and then click on the game code section. And it gives the same reward as always. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's on my birthday. Well, that'll be easy to remember. <laughs> it shifts on my birthday. You need another Tyree. The only way you can get more than one Tyree, other than the one you get for free from Zolkiri, is wait till the event comes around or just randomly get it off a uh, gem key and a glory key. Uh, which is going to be just random luck if you end up getting it there. But yeah, double Tyree is really nice for map farming. Uh, the single Tyree team that you would end up using if you need a really good early game team is Dryad, uh, Goblin Shaman, Dryad with Tyree. And you use that with Frozen Banner, the plus two blue, plus one purple. And for later on in the game, you would use the exact same banner, plus two blue, plus one purple. But you would use it with Green Seer, Giant Spider, and Double Tyree. And those are the two teams that you would use for map farming. Uh, it's been the same way since pretty much forever. Uh, since Tyra gave maps, those two teams have been the meta for farming maps. You never see me doing it because we have more maps than we ever realistically know what to do with. Um, but uh, that would be what you would do in early game if you had a lack of maps. And my other account doesn't really have a lack because we keep giving it redeem codes. <laughs> so it perpetually always has enough as well. Even when we need it for like events and stuff like that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for coming down. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. We'll be back uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is about 13 hours from now. And we'll be back same time as always every night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is one hour prior to now tomorrow. Uh, what advice on key use, balancing monthly mythic with random mythics? I don't know what you're asking with that question. Um, but generally, the way that you go for going for random ones compared to the new one 
is if you have less than half the mythics in the game, you should go for the random mythic. And if you have more than half the mythics in the game, you should go for the new mythic. And the main reason for this is it's just a more efficient way to try to accumulate every single mythic in the game, is to do it that way. But um, yeah, less than half of the mythics, you go for random, and more than half, you go for whatever the new one is, even if it's not necessarily the best, unless it's absolute trash, in which case, you'd probably just keep waiting. But, um, and the main reason for that is it's the most efficient way to accumulate every mythic from a resource perspective. So basically, just count out how many mythics there are in the game, count how many mythics you actually own, base mythics, like ones that are actually mythic with three colors, and then just do the math from there to decide if it's worth it. Uh, what can you do with Ubistet on low level? Uh, a lot of things. He can very easily double kill. Um, basically, just give him a lot of mana. Make sure you poke them. You can use something as simple as the goblin that you get all the way at the beginning of the game to go and poke something into range. I even um, did a very early game team on that. All you have to do is use um, Hero with anything, Goblin, Azura, and Ubistet. It's very, very low rarity, but it ends up getting it done. Basically, what you do is you use Azura as your main mana accumulator. That then gives you a bunch of goblins that you can keep spamming on the enemy. And with the goblin, you keep spamming on the enemy. You just ro lower them into Ubistet range. Then simply cast your Ubistet and double kill. Then repeat the cycle with Azura again into goblin into Ubistet. And you just won um, easily with two casts. Or two Ubistet casts, I should say. But um, yeah, it's really easy to go build low rarity um, Ubistet. Because all you need is goblin, Azura, and uh, Ubistet. If you already own the Ubistet, that's the hardest part. Uh, Azura you get for free from completing out the uh, Leonis Empire, I mean, from completing out Merlantis questline. So once you complete that completely out, you'll get a free Azura. And Goblin you start off with. And the only other thing you put in your team is Hero, so you gain Hero XP. So you're already good to go. But yeah, it's really easy to build cheap Ubistet. He's probably one of the easiest Mythics in the entire game to actually build a super cheap team out of. Uh, which is kind of nice that you got it early on. Can you farm gnomes in challenges? Yes, you can. It's actually the quickest way to get it, though you get almost no resources while doing challenges, so if that's a good enough trade-off for you, then you can. It's technically the highest rate of uh, gnomes you could possibly ever get, but you're getting almost no resources while you're doing it, <clears throat> other than trait stones and hero XP. That's about the only thing you're really getting while you're doing it, so do keep that in mind. But anyways, guys, I'll see you all later. Thank you so much for coming down. Have a good weekend, and goodbye, everyone!